This is a Buell Ulysses XB-12, and it's a failure. Hey, have you heard of a bike that is called the Ulysses? To talk about Buell is to talk about the tragedy of death. Buell is a motorcycle company that failed. It's an American failure. What, what is a Buell? It is a Harley Davidson in most respects. Uh, Eric Buell. For those of you who know motorcycles, you've heard this story a number of times, but this is a car show and some people don't know the story of Buell. And it's a weird thing about cars because some people really like cars and they don't care about motorcycles. But Buell is a company worth talking about and it's a company worth remembering for what it tried to do. And what it tried to do is inject a bit of sophistication into the Harley engine. Harley Davidson. What is Harley Davidson? It's the most purest version of American exceptionalism rolling around in two wheels. Forget Hemi Kudas, Harleys. Even the name is perfect. Eric Buell was a racer who started building sports bikes using Sportster engines. The advantage of using that, if tuned correctly, the pushrod Harley-Davidson 1200cc V-twin engine makes tons of torque at low end, and that does have racing applications, if put in a proper frame. So what Buell did was made very good handling frames that just happened to use a big, lopy American engine. And later, Harley-Davidson liked the idea, and throughout the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, Eric was allowed to run his own division of Harley-Davidson. I know it's much more complicated than that, but we're keeping it simple for a simple review. So what you have here is a Harley-Davidson that handles. Buell's handle well. Now, this is the Ulysses. This is supposed to be a contender for the BMW GS1200. Doesn't really work. Buell's, while they're very good handling bikes, don't stand up to abuse, to neglect. Lots of plastic on these things, and you can't build an off-road plastic bike. So what this bike really is, is a tour wearing the makeup of a dual sport. Yes, there are people who take these off-road, but bear in mind a lot of these little plastic bits are just for show. Buell is for someone who wants to ride a Harley, but also has some very progressive opinions about gun control. A Buell is for someone who wants a Harley, but is also in favor of stricter bullying laws. A Buell is for a motorcycle rider who would like to ride a Harley, but rather would wear synthetic material instead of leather. A Buell is for a guy who wants to ride a Harley, but also likes full-face helmets. A Buell is for someone who doesn't believe in starting sentences with, as an American, I. A Buell is for someone who wants a Harley Davidson, but also wants to commute every day and not worry about banging it up, as evidenced by this rear tire. I apologize, neither the owner or myself realized that the rear tire was worn down to the cords, but that's how it is when you commute on your bike every day. Man, motorcycle tires really wear themselves down in the back. They're not like car tires. They'll last, I mean, if you ride a lot, they'll last a season, maybe two. And you can just wear those things, you can square them right off. Heck, I did it. Although that is a badge of pride for people who ride all the time, wearing a tire right down to the cords. There's no shame in squaring off a tire. You're getting your mileage out and you're getting your hours in. Every time I get on a Buell, I often wonder why I never bought one of these things. They're a joy to turn over. A little bit scary when you feel a big bike like this lean all the way over. But your weight, from the big Harley-derived engine is down low, so this is a touring bike that wants to lean over all the time, and it does it wonderfully. The only thing that lets you down is you get so much torque and so much pull right from about like 3,000 RPM. You think it's just gonna go, and then you get up to five, and then there's nothing. It just, you get... They're also very, very good brakes. One of the weird things about Buells, particularly about the Ulysses, oh, the Lightning is even weirder or the Thunderbolt, ugh, is that they have short, short rakes. You get on a Harley, they have longer rakes. Now, okay, rake is how far the forks stick out. You see those old ones from the 70s, where they, had, they had huge rakes, that front tire's way in front of you. Sport bikes, and you look at, you, it's, it's almost getting close to like GT bikes. Way, way, and by GT bikes, I mean race bikes like AMA racers, which Buell did participate in. When you have a short rake, those forks are almost pointed straight down. It's a n 
tight, tight bite. And all it wants to do, you hardly need much to turn. You think and this thing turns over. And you got the wide handlebars with the bark busters on it. I know they're plastic. Buells also have some very odd engineering. They store their oil in the swing arm and the fuel is in the two big frame rails that go on either side. That, uh, that tank in front of you isn't a tank. No, your fuel's in the rails on either side. I want to like the Buell. I, I, I want to like it, but I can understand why it went under. And it really has nothing to do with the build quality. Yeah, some of the ones in the 80s were weird, but the company was getting started. The problem with Buell is that they never embraced their American heritage. And I say this with sincerity. If you're going to build an American motorcycle, you have to wave the flag high and strong and big. And Buell never did. They were trying to make a very sophisticated motorcycle, a libertarian motorcycle. They didn't feel the need to parade patriotism around. But if you want to sell a bike, you have to make it damn obvious where this bike is coming from. I mean, look at Japanese bikes. We like them because they're Japanese, because they're not American. We we want to wonder what it's like to be over there. So you get on a katana. I mean, how patronizing is that? We named a bike after a sword. But people bought them. That's why people buy Harleys. They, they put it right. Who else could call a bike a fat boy? Dynaglide. V-Rod. Fofftail. 883 Iron. Road King. Electroglide. What does Buell call this? The Ulysses. An Irish novel. Good one. Stream of consciousness. It's pretty easy to understand once you get it, but getting it's a bit hard. And I'm aware what Stephen Fry said about it. You can't teach Ulysses to high school kids because it's a novel about nothing. And this is a bike about nothing. It looks like it goes off road, but it doesn't. It is a Harley, but it isn't. It's an American, but it doesn't say it is. Except for here. I wish Buell stuck around though. But it's one of these things that I like in my head and I don't know if I'd ever put money behind it. The Blast was fun. I didn't own one but I wrote it. I love the Blast. The Thunderbolt was great. The 1125CR was a joy. But if I want an American motorcycle, I want to eat a double cheeseburger and just indulge in nationalism. And the Buells don't do that. Like the Pontiac Fiero, Buells are from an alternate America. And when Buell finally was closed, when the company shut down, they went back to their dimension they came from. I don't know, call Rick. Maybe he can find a portal for us to go check it out. Later. Mamas, don't let your Buells grow up to be Harleys. This makes tons of torque, and it has decent specs, but it's named like the dildo from Masters of Sex. Hey, have you heard of a bike that is called the Ulysses? I rode the last one an hour ago. It's got a nice engine, but it's not about it.